Okay, we're going to do this real fast and real simple. What I'm about to teach you is called the stroke chart. Follow along with me, write down what I write on the board, and after you learn this chart, you'll never get a stroke question wrong ever again. All right, first thing. What I want you to do is draw a tic-tac-toe board, okay? Draw a tic-tac-toe board, and now we're going to label the tic-tac-toe board. What the tic-tac-toe board is, is the brainstem, okay? This part is our midbrain. This part is our pons. And this part is our medulla, okay? So now, for imagining this being the brainstem, this will be medial. And these both sides will both be lateral. These are both the same sides. Just picture yourself looking at the midbrain. It's like the midbrain will be if I cut this in half, if I cut down the middle here, this would be the right side, this would be the left side. Okay? Simple to the point. Now, first thing you want to do is maybe take out a different color. With this red marker, I'm going to draw the cranial nerves that pertain to each section. So, for example, I'm going to put the number three here. So, I'm going to go three. What's three times two? Six. What's six times two? 12. So the first thing you do when you're writing a stroke chart is you want to put in the cranial nerves that pertain to each section. So if I ask, for example, what's in the, what cranial nerve is in the medial um, midbrain, you say cranial nerve 3. Okay? So you're going to write 3, 6, 12. And then, what comes after 6? 7. So you're going to draw 7 on the border of the lateral and medial pons. Okay? And then, we're going to draw over here, we're going to draw the letter V and VN, okay? So again over here, because remember, both sides are the same. So V and VN here, and V and VN here. So V is for cranial nerve 5. But I put it in the V form because I want you to remember that V and VN go here on the same line, on the border between the lateral pons and the lateral medulla, okay? So V is number 5. VN is vestibular nucleus, as in cranial nerve 8. Vestibular nucleus, cranial nerve 8. Okay? I'm also going to put here a 9 and 10. And a 9 and 10. This is for the, vague, uh, it's for the um, nucleus ambiguous. Um, that's the nucleus that deals with the gag reflex and other things that pertain to uh, the cranial nerves. Uh, not the cranial nerves that pertain to the vagus nerve and to the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, now we got all our cranial nerves down here. Let's put in which arteries supply each part of the brain. First, with our blue marker, we're going to draw the PCA across the board. So the midbrain is supplied by the PCA. That's easy. That's quick. Let's get that out of the way. Then, if we're going we're to work our way down here, okay? Uh, PCA is supplies the middle midbrain, the bacillar, or basilar, supplies the medial pons, okay? So the PCA, bacillar, and then over here, we have the anterior spinal artery. Right? So far so good? Good. Um, up here in the lateral pons is going to be supplied by the acha. And naturally, if the acha is up here, we're going to put the pica down here. Okay, so now we have where all the arteries go. So why am I doing this? Because just like to say, for example, let's say someone asks you, um, someone comes in with, uh, you know, uh, vertigo, loss of sensation of the face, um, and they also have, I don't know, symptoms of the facial nerve. Then you're like, okay, hmm. Well, we know vertigo will be the vestibular nucleus. We know loss of sensation to the face will be the um, cranial nerve 5. And we know that the facial nerve is also on the border here. So then we can narrow it down to, oh, this must be affecting the lateral pons. And acha must be the artery that's blocked. Okay, and that applies for each section. Okay, so after this, there is more to fill in, but I just wanted you to get an idea of where we're going with all this. Okay, next, I want you to draw in, with your black pen, the peduncles, okay? In the lateral medulla, you're going to have the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And remember, that's the same on both sides. 
And then in the lateral pons, you can have the medial cerebellar peduncle. Okay, medial cerebellar peduncle. Okay, so if you get symptoms, if you get symptoms like ataxia or any other cerebellar symptoms, you can automatically think about, okay, it must be either in the lateral pons, which is where the MCP is, or it's in the lateral medulla, because that's where the ICP is. Okay, simple enough. Last thing we have to draw here is the tracts. Okay, so I like to draw the tracts in the lateral portion first. Remember they're on, remember they're on the... They're on the same, same on both sides. So what runs through the lateral brainstem are two tracts. Okay, we can draw two tracts here. Also, obviously we're gonna have to squeeze them in here because I have these words here, but it's fine. So the two tracts are as follows: you have the spinal thalamic tract and the sympathetic tract. So like, if you knock out, for example, pica, you're gonna have loss of pain and temperature. And you're going to have the Horner syndrome because you lose the sympathetic um, innervation because that, that's where it crosses the pica zone, okay? And then the same thing here, sympathetic um, and um, spinal phalanx. Other tracks to do, just quickly, are the um, other tracks are the cortical spinal tract, okay? which runs through the midline. And then um, you also have the medial lemniscus that starts in the medulla in the midline and then goes laterally, crosses over in the midbrain. So we're gonna put medial lemniscus here, okay, and corticospinal here. Okay, so if you remember where everything goes, then you can't get a stroke question wrong, okay? Um, remember, when you draw this chart, like we did, like, just like we did in the order of this video, Draw the um, tic-tac-toe board, label everything, then label the cranial nerves, then label where the arteries go, peduncles, tracts. You get that all done, you won't, be able to, you won't get a question wrong on the test, okay? Right? When you sit down for the test, sit down, draw this all out, and then any time you get a stroke question, you match the symptoms to the, to the zone, you match the symptoms, to the uh, zone of the tic-tac-toe board, and you'll get the answer to the question right.